Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor here at ClassicsToday.com with If I Could Choose Only One Work By, dot, 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 what would it be? And oh my, we're doing Mahler. This is a bitch of a choice. It really is. But we have to do it because we need to appease the evil god of classical music, Kent Grisans, who has told us that it, we must come up with the list of works we wish to preserve because he's going to destroy everything else forever in his annoyance with the classical music industry and those who run it and their foolishness and, and, and mistreatment of this vast treasure trove of music that he has graciously bestowed upon us. And our goal is to come up with a list which is so fabulous that we will appease his wrath and he will let us have whatever we damn well please and leave us alone. That's the concept. Well, we're doing Mahler. And what do you say about Mahler? I mean, he didn't write so much. And so everything he wrote is precious. And and to choose is, is a bear. And, you know, some of you have already made suggestions, mostly the Ninth Symphony and Das Lied von der Erde. And I understand both. That Das Lied von der Erde is, is probably, arguably, maybe his greatest work. I mean, I don't want to say things like that, but certainly his most original and distinctive. It's a combination of song and symphony. It had many, many successors that were done in a similar way. It was massively influential. And it's absolutely perfect in and of itself and so expressive and so lovely. And oh my goodness, how can you not love Das Lied von Erde? And the ninth, well, I mean, the ninth is the ninth. It's his last completed symphony. It has in its final adagio the most unbelievably poetic depiction of, of, of the act of dying in peace, <laughs> not, not with anguish, um, that anybody ever composed. It's so desperately beautiful and sad and gorgeous. And the first movement may be his most perfect large form. I don't know. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? That is why I have taken all of your suggestions um, into consideration and added to it, of course, my thinking. And I have decided on symphony number two, the resurrection. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons. First of all, it does have the vocal bit. So you do get the song element, which you also get in Das Lied von der Erde. I think you should have something with some singing. Um, I think that it is, you know, it, it has almost supplanted um, as a festival work the, uh, you know, last symphony of one Ludwig van, which is really kind of amazing when you think about it. But, but I understand why, because it's written for the full modern orchestra in a way that no other work ever had been. And I mean that in all serious, not Wagner, not nobody. It is, it is an exordium, a, a textbook. Richard Strauss, Richard Strauss said the one work he always kept on his piano stand was Mahler's Second Symphony. And he said, and I never ceased to learn from it. I mean, also Sprach Zarathustra shows that pretty clearly. And, you know, the, the, one of the main motives in the first movement of Mahler too is, Dum, bum, bum. Well, turn it upside down. Bum, bum, bum. Right? There you go. But beyond that, beyond that, I think it has a grandiosity of vision and a confidence in that grandiosity that that was absolutely, absolutely unique and, and completely stunning. And not only that, it's a big, long thing. You know, it just, it just, you never want it to end, but it's a big, long thing. And it, it combines melodies from the Wunderhorn songs that Mahler wrote with, with a wonderfully non-sectarian view of eternal life and hope and optimism and an ending with, with an organ and bells and two, two, two tam-tams of different pitch. And, I, you know, there was just nothing like it. And Mahler never really wrote anything like it afterwards either. No, no Mahler symphony is exactly like any other. As a composer, every single work was, was a new exploration of, you know, similar themes. But at the same time, it's all so personal and so, so characteristic of the composer himself. I, it really is something special. But I, I remember the, the, the second symphony has maybe not the formal perfection of some of the later works and or the exquisite clarity and balance of Das Lied von der Erde, but it hits you in the gut 
like nothing else. I'll never forget the first time I heard it. It was Leopold Stokowski's recording, which is very eccentric. Of course, it's Stokowski, but it was on RCA. It was new. It came out, what, like 1974, something like that. And I read a review of it and in the New York Times, Arts and Leisure section, and I went out and grabbed it. And um, I, you know, I was, I was, what, 13, 12, something like that. And I had never heard anything even remotely like it. It just blew my mind. I mean, the, the, the scream of despair chord, ooh, baby, in the scherzo, and then at the beginning of the finale, and then that huge climax before the chorus comes in, where just everything, I'd never heard someone use an orchestra in such an uninhibited, gleeful way of just making these unbelievable sounds. And then at the final chorus, when the chorus sings, Was du geschlagen? And, you know, the cymbals and bass drum come in with pow, like that, on schlagen. I mean, they're schlagging, you know, what you have, 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 have suffered, have, what you have, have, you know, anyway, you know, what you have, have defeated will carry you to God or what you have struggled through or whatever it means, who cares? The thing is, I was, I was, I remember where I was. I remember exactly the moment I was lying down in bed reading a book, actually, because I used to listen to new works and I would read at the same time, you know. And and if the piece was really great, it would distract me. And when they did Vastu Geschlagen in this thing, and I didn't have a great sound system in those days. I had a couple of bookshelf speakers. That was it. I mean, I just was reading. All of a sudden, I was sitting up. It was like I'd by, been hit by something, like a bolt of lightning. I just sat bolt upright and went, <gasps> it was just so unbelievable. My God, I mean, so much new, so many new sounds and and such an amazing emotional trajectory from the, the, the tense funeral, funereal opening movement through the crazy scherzo to the song bit to the, you know, I mean, wow, just wow. I mean, all the other symphonies are wonderful. They really are. But I'm going at this point for the wow factor. And the Mahler Symphony, with I think the biggest wow factor, even more than the eighth, um, is is number two, the Resurrection. It's just extraordinary, and so that's my pick for the one thing that has to survive. You know, much as I love all the rest of it, I could be very very happy with number two for you know all eternity. And I choose number two so that we don't have to be happy with just number two for all eternity, so that Cancrazans will get the picture. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. And feel free to keep, keep talking to me about your selections for works by other composers. The one, the one. And then I, you've noticed I am taking your suggestions. And the list of where we are so far is down below. This is, I think, number five, but I'm not numbering these. We're just, we're just doing the list. And then, by the way, the end of this whole thing, we're going to do a separate video on the, the list, our plea to the great god Cancrazans with the full list. And we'll see what happens. I'm feeling very good about this. So take care, friends. Thank you so much for joining me.